All right, peoples, this is Ross. So if you can tell, watching our earlier videos, the snow has finally melted. We've got a lot of snow in the last, I don't know, last few weeks, really piled up high and uh, finally it's gone. It's almost completely gone. I know the, the north side of my house that's really shaded still has some, uh, some snow piled up, but for the most part, I actually now have access to my figs. So what we're gonna do in today's video is actually start my season. Today is really day one of my fig 2021 growing season. Because what we're gonna do is we're gonna take off this cut and cover method here where we cut them all back to six to 12 inches. We covered them with straw and then we covered them with these tarps and then we weighed down the tarps with these bricks and bags of rocks and bags of soil. And that helps protect them over the winter time from the cold. Um, believe it or not, I didn't need to do any of that this year. Um, so there really should be no damage. Um, if there is, it's probably maybe some damage that was related um, to something that happened in the fall. But the fall was quite mild and progressively, uh, progressively got colder. Whereas the, uh, the winter time uh, was quite, I would say, brutal, but in, not in the extreme sense. It was really a month and a half, maybe two months of not even seeing over 40 degrees Fahrenheit. So it was really tough, I think, with the, with the uh, pandemic and all that as well, but um, I'm really happy. You have no idea how happy I am today to actually be able to start my season. So here's my irrigation that I use for the potted trees. We're gonna take this off, put it on the patio real quick. Get this out of the way. Now, what I was getting to is that not only are we gonna take this cut and cover method off, these tarps, the straw, but we're also gonna set up the low tunnels. And for many of you who've been following along now, you know that my plans with these low tunnels is to actually set them up about two months prior to my average last frost. So my average last frost is May 1st. I really wanted to get this set up um, March 1st. March 1st, I took my CPA exam. Also, it's been really cold and uh, really just haven't had enough time with tax season and all kinds of things really just to even do this. So I'm lucky I'm out here right now. But we're gonna set these, uh, these low tunnels up not today, um, not in this video. I'm gonna do the uncovering process right now for you guys. Inspect the trees, take off the straw, see what the deal is. Um, and I'm gonna also evaluate how much space I have here to actually plant uh, more fig trees in the ground. Because what I really wanna do is fill in any gaps. I have really not that many trees to plant because my goal, at least in my life, is to move out of this property within the next six to 10 months. So it doesn't really make sense to plant any fig trees that are extremely young, uh, but it does make some sense to plant some fig trees that um, you know, are a bit more established that maybe I have them in, let's say a three gallon or five gallon size pot, maybe even a larger pot, um, I will plant those. And I'll put them really either in these beds here, this bed or anywhere they have, I have space uh, where it makes sense. And I really don't remember how much space I have. Um, but what I do know, at least right now, is that I want to plant these fig trees in the ground before I actually set up these low tunnels. And the reason for that is because these low tunnels are going to give these trees a huge head start to the season and also get them really well established. So if I plant a five gallon size tree in the ground, get my low tunnels up in the next, probably by this weekend, that gives me roughly, I'm gonna say about, uh, all of March, all of April. So basically almost all of March and all of April. So almost, almost the two full months 
before the growing season even really begins. And in fact, here in this climate, my fig season really, not only does it not begin until May, but it really doesn't begin in terms of the soil temperatures necessary until let's say June 1st. You know, the, the in-ground trees here really don't do anything for the most part, unless you give them the most optimal conditions that I've mentioned in the past. So many other videos, trying to get your fig trees a warmer soil is so critical, especially here in this climate. And uh, if you don't do that, your fig trees just will not become metabolically active until around June 1st, which is by that time of the season is like, it's just too late. Like you wasted, you wasted your time. Um, you're not gonna have a successful season. And if you do, it's gonna be pretty sparse and you really need to have the right genetics. And it's just, yeah, at that point to me, it doesn't seem all that worth it. So I think that's really uh, important for a lot of us, not just people in colder places, but for all of us almost, you know, unless you live in like the desert or Southern California, getting your trees more soil temperatures early in the season. So not only, as I was saying, is that are these low tunnels gonna help get these five gallon trees established that I'm gonna plant, but uh, it's gonna help get the rest of these trees that are already sort of established a much better start to the season. And they're gonna produce a heck of a lot more fruit because of it. So that's really, really key. Um, can't stress it enough. And that's really where the beauty of this method is. It really isn't, I mean, this is not really the best method of winter protection. I mean, you could probably do another method that maybe protects them even better. Maybe you don't necessarily even need to do this. Maybe we can um, bend the branches down instead of cutting them all back. Maybe we can have uh, Japanese espaillers or low cordons in the ground. This is just one method here that I'm using to make sure that I can set these low tunnels up. Whatever we do, using these low tunnels is really the key. That's where the money is. It's not in this winter protection thing. It's really what we're doing right now. By getting all this heat, setting up these low tunnels, it is so incredible. I think, honestly, we're gonna be amazed by the end of the season. Because uh, to be honest, totally honest with you guys, if you recall, I didn't even get to see these low tunnels in action from the very beginning of my season. We set them up about half of the time. Well, I think the plan, I don't even remember what the plan was actually at this point. All I know is that I couldn't set these up in February. It's really, this is the earliest day I could set them up. Normally I, I turn on the heater in the greenhouse, by the way, around March 1st. So we're, we're kind of on schedule, but I, I believe last year we only had them up for maybe 45 days or something. And I think I was supposed to set these up in February, actually, now that I think about it. So I don't even know if that's possible. But what I do know is that we have not seen this method to its fullest potential. So that's kind of, you know, um, exciting. It really is like, wh what's gonna happen? You know what I mean? Like, what is it that we're gonna see from these trees? Cause I already saw the effect it gives these trees last year. And that was with a limited amount of time that these low tunnels were set up. If we do this right from the beginning at a longer period, <laughs> I mean, what, what is really going to happen? So I'm certainly super, super excited for this. And yeah, I can't wait to share it with you guys on this, this journey this year, basically, of how this is all going to work out. So what I'm doing right now is just very simply taking off most of the straw. The straw, as I've mentioned, is helping to insulate these trees throughout the wintertime. And that's really all that it's here for. Right now, if I left the straw here, it actually would act 
as a way to cool the soil down, and that would defeat this entire purpose for the most part. Now, I guess I could leave this here in addition to, hmm, in addition to the low tunnels, because the low tunnels, by the way, guys, I didn't, I was gonna get to this, but I forgot, is that the low tunnels, if it's 50 degrees outside and it's sunny, the low tunnels are gonna make the temperature underneath these tunnels 100. So we're gaining 50 degrees Fahrenheit in the air. That obviously doesn't make a huge big of a difference because we don't care about the air temperatures all that much. We really care about the soil temperatures, but it has a huge effect on the soil. So if we can, for certain, make this warmer in the soil, we're gonna be better off. And again, the straw is cooling things down. But my thought just now was actually, maybe it might be a better idea, simply because I do have issues with watering these trees. I do have issues with them, um, you know, getting enough water while this low tunnel set up for so long. Um, and last year, what I learned is that I definitely am gonna have to set up irrigation, which I did, but not for all of the beds. I didn't do it for this bed and that bed. Uh, I set up the irrigation on the other side of the house on the west side on two of the beds there because the soil in those specific locations uh, is not as clay as it is here. It's kind of like peat um, because I put down a lot of peat over there. But here it's so heavy and there's so much water already existing in the soil that I feel like I don't need the straw and it would only sort of hurt my cause and uh, cool the soil down. So if that's the case, um, we're gonna remove the, the, the straw like we are. And I'm putting it in these boxes here very simply because I wanna make use of the straw and other trees. So we're gonna put this on trees that are not, you know, kind of as tropical, even though figs are not very tropical, but not as heat loving as a fig, like the stone fruits, the apples, the pears, a lot of the temperate fruits that I grow here on this, this property. We'll put this right underneath and this will break down, this will feed them. Also going to do uh, oysters. We're going to grow oysters this year. So uh, I don't know if I can really make use of this too well, but I do get some uh, grain spawn in the mail. So we're going to grow some Italian oysters in straw. So we're saving this. I don't want to let it go to waste. I don't want to leave it here. So you can kind of see my dilemma as to why it is that I'm doing all this. In addition, the cardboard here is nice to, to keep because, well, then we can, of course, use the cardboard and also feed the soil and uh, block out any weeds that we might have. So that's what we're doing right now is I'm gonna remove this inspect the trees i'm already can i can already see some of the weeds coming up i can see some of the slugs and then we're going to set these low tunnels up at a later date i'll show you guys that process and i'm going to bring you guys in we'll get to see the trees there there really is no damage because well, the only damage I guess that could have occurred is from voles, right? These rodents could have got underneath, ate the bark. This is a great habitat for voles. If you have voles, it's definitely a challenge to use this method. There are alternatives and answers, but uh, certainly there's no damage on these trees. And that really just goes to show you that we didn't get very cold this winter. And uh, now the method is really good at protecting them, but I have trees unprotected on this property, so we didn't really need this. It's a shame, but it's a precaution, right? And I'm rather that we use the precaution, we did this precaution, than not do anything at all. So I'm not uh, upset that we did this and that it's gonna re require a bit more work. It is what it is. So let me uh, bring you guys in now. We will show you very quickly what some of these trees look like. If there's any uh, people out there who still just, you know, whatever it is, don't believe in this method. 
This is a younger tree right here. I think this one's Texas peach or Rosa Esmeralda. And uh, it's a little bent. So we need to, what we're gonna do actually is stake some of these branches away from each other. I tried very, when I pruned these trees, we did a video specifically on pruning these. And I made sure that I pruned them as far away from each other as possible, um, simply so that we could space the branches out as they are, you know, very, very dense. In between the trees is only two feet. And to sort of allow that to happen, really to make this whole system work, I've learned last year, we have to limit the number of fruiting branches in here. So I need to come in here and stake the branches. I need to come in here and uh, space everything out, um, thin the branches, make sure that everything's really good. There's a lot more work involved than uh, probably necessary, but this is the route that I've decided to go to go with. Again, there's no damage on these trees and they made it through just fine. This branch here, I think used to be in this direction, but even if, actually no, I think this would be fine going out towards that way. So essentially we want to make sure that if this is a box, imagine the camera, um, each corner of the camera is our rectangle or our box. We want to make sure that this one's going over to that corner. This one's going into the bottom right corner. This one's going to the bottom left. And that one there is going in the top, top left. So if we do that, we space them out really well. We get good light penetration into these trees. We get ourselves really good fruit set. If we don't do that, we fail. It's pretty simple. It's really, it's really that, uh, really is that simple. Here's actually some damage right here. But it's very minimal it's just at the top of this branch. Sometimes you may see that, right? The tips of the branches, not as protected. They're not as insulated as well with the straw as you can see. This one here broke, probably from the weight of the snow. But that's all this is. That's all this is here, guys. These are a lot of, a lot of these trees actually I planted right in the, uh, in the fall like this guy here. So I didn't even dig themselves in for a year. I just stuck them in the ground here, kind of healed them in and then covered them. And we have ourselves success. So that is the cut and cover method. That's the beginning of my season, guys. I'm excited. It's nice to have, you know, a breath of fresh air to actually get outside, do something, be excited, look forward to something in these, uh, these tough times. I hope everybody's doing well. Um, I'm gonna take care of this, get my job here accomplished, and uh, we'll see you guys for the next one. We set these tunnels up. We'll talk about actually planting the trees and staking before we do that, because uh, I have a number of trees I wanna plant, and then we'll set them up, and I'll include you guys along the way. I imagine by this weekend, so probably by the 6th or the 7th of March, uh, my tunnels will be set up and that will give me roughly a two month head start to the season. All right, guys, take care.